morning. Welcome back to the Antique Engine Tractor Association for our annual working tractor show down here in Genesee, Illinois this year, featuring the first Norts, the Alice Charmers tractors, all the way from West Dallas, Wisconsin. They all came down here to hang out with us. We are first going to talk about this Alice Charmers Jeep. This is um, owned by Jason Heather Shanks out of Morrison, Illinois. Really cool little tractors that these were. They were designed to have the implement sit in front of the operator, so they're great. I mean, set up right now to pull the around. Great for that setup where you had everything you know right in front of you. You weren't obstructed because the motor's actually behind you. That's why you have a big weight up here because uh, these things are pretty small. You can you know you and a couple buddies can pick these things up and throw them in the back of a truck. Um, but great to see this one. They just got this in all done and restored. It's absolutely gorgeous. Hopefully we might see this one run a little bit later. But as you can see, we've got some pretty cool stuff in our shed. Um, we've got a couple of old rarities. We've got a UC that is the second. Serial number, but it's also the first true three bottom tractor that was ever in Knox County. So, if you're in Knox County in the 30s, you can have a three bottom tractor until you were that guy. Also, it's been owned by the same family since 1932. So, coming up on century of ownership, I think it might have paid for itself at this point. Um, some other cool Alice's actually, we're going to come over to this one right here to this 1919 Now, if this looks similar, this, this does kind of look like those Minneapolis as we talked about before. This is that same concept where you have the implement. This had a motor hunt on the front, but you had your implement. We honestly bring you in for a closer look on that. But we got tons of cool orange tractors to check out. We'll keep bringing you along and we'll also go out in the field, check some of that out. Don't forget, we are really live stream both days of parade, so come check that out as well. And uh, we'll check out some more orange tractors. Just some, just some cool stuff. All right, we're going to go walk outside the shed here and just go ahead and talk about the, uh, the tank in the room here. Alice Chalmers 8550, powered by 731 cubic inches of Alice power. She's got the big old B pump on her. She's ready to rock and roll. This thing, I was actually at our show last year. One of the biggest Alice, truly branded Alice tractors they made. From 78 to 81, I believe. Kind of the biggest line on that. The accumulation of that 7,000 and 8,000 series with the same kind of hood stylings and with that uh, famous curved down nose that they had. This is actually a pretty cool example of it. Full walk around to this thing. There's actually quite a few cent big old uh, full wheel drives here today we're going to go and talk about. All right, we got some small ones. Actually, a little uh, RC down there is running. We got a, a CA there and a Series 4 D14, or D15, excuse me, D17. Wow, wow, I'm really out of it. Anyway, but I was talking to my buddy, Mr. Temple over here. He actually puts on that Dutch Day show. And if you're longtime viewers of the channel, remember this tractor from back a couple years ago, back at Dutch Days. This is the WD that shouldn't exist. This essentially was a demonstrator tractor. And uh, it was supposed to go back to Wisconsin, supposed to go back to West Dallas and um, meet the fate with the cutting torch. But somehow it slipped through the cracks. I don't know what paperwork happened. But either way, they ended up with it. Kurt Temple's father ended up with it, farmed with it for many years. It sat for about 30 years, and he started to restore it. He was just showing me some of the pictures. Absolutely, this thing was down to there was no rubber on the tires. You could, you could reach your hand through the rims. It made my 1550 rims look brand new. Took it all the way down, completely rebuilt it, and uh, made an absolutely beautiful tractor. We've like, so seen this one out before, but you know, I know he's going to bring this thing out for the big Alice show here. Now, we're talking about Alice's, and how they were unique was they were big fans of planetary gears, the final drives. So it, what, it, what it gave you was a very high clearance. You know, you get a little high clearance, and you can run a little bit smaller tire, but that's just like kind of like on some on some what some tractors did for their high crops. It's kind of what Alice did for everything. You can see on this uh, on this little D12 here, same way, 29 horsepower tractor had little baby ones. So it's kind of what Alice did. It kind of kept that rear end up in the air a little bit, kind of gave you a lower profile for the whole tractor, and um, really was a very popular option. And obviously we got the big industrial D21 back there. Another D21. 
Another Alice over here. We'll come check this one out. It's an early four-wheel drive, I believe. Yeah, this is a 440. It's powered by the Cummins. Quick edit, folks. I had to uh, do some checking there, and I was right. This was actually made by the Steiger Company. I said this thing looks like an Alice that might look like a little uh, Steiger. That's because of what they did at the time. Alice hadn't been, wasn't able to gear up to make a big four-wheel drive tractor, so they contacted the Steiger Company and uh, had these made, powered by the Cummins. Will it be back there? Here's another cool piece they got out here. A little bit of uh, land equipment. We got your Alice Charmers. Uh, backhoe 715 series b as well as right next to this old road grader alice charmers d that was a real cool story back in the day about alice charmers and actually they're bulldozers i don't know if we have any of those at the show this year we're back in the there's a real bad avalanche back in the day back in the not avalanche snowstorm i can't talk and uh in nebraska and it pretty much shut the whole place down and alice is one of the main manufacturers that provided bulldozers to help that push out so kind of a cool little homage to uh, some of the road equipment here with this D. We'll keep checking things out. The Alice Charmers D, we just looked at this. Got a little more info on it for you folks. So this was designed after the, basically it's a dedicated only grader tractor. You saw a lot in this time period, there's a lot of conversions. You know, you've seen a lot of, you know, a lot of times you'll see them come up for sale like an M or something that's converted to have a road grader versus this is a dedicated grader. And uh, weighing only 8,500 pounds, it was absolutely great for smaller jobs. You know, your landscaping, your small housing projects was at the time, post-World War II, was extremely popular as the suburbs were starting to grow. So the, the Model D, extremely popular back in the time. This one back restored back in 2017, absolutely gorgeous. Pretty cool deals. Again, what's something that you might not think about Alice Charmers the same way as this uh, back over here, but something that we represent here at the show kind of shows all sides of things we got them in all their clothes there we got a d15 back in the working clothes yet another d14 back there we'll go check out uh some more rarities over here we got a 7040 open station well not open station but no cab just the rollover guard and then an 8050 high crop that was going to be a rare one as well as just, just about every house under the sun. We'll keep checking things out, maybe go out to the field. One of the main things about our show, one of the coolest little features we have is not only working tractors, we also have working train. We got that little uh, diesel powered, was to be probably worked a short line in some factory. But we also, many years ago, bought ourselves a steam engine. Now we went up to try and get restored up north a little bit and uh, well, kind of lost in, uh, there were some issues there with that, and it ended up coming back home. Needless to say, if we're going to turn this one into an actual static display, is uh, she might be a little hurting. She does look good, though. So we're glad to have it back here. This is actually the first year. Here's our whole train crew there. Those guys work real hard making sure the train runs all day. So they got this thing kind of popped out to kind of show it off this year now that it's back at home. Like I said, I think you're going to turn it into a display. Might maybe eventually be able to pull it around, but it won't be uh, powered. Pretty cool old train. It's a quarter unit, uh, so it would have been used on smaller lines. Like, you know, if you, a lot of times, like the old steel mills would have used something smaller like that. A lot of factories would shuttle stuff around. That's what all of the short, uh, or they call it, you know, narrow gauge is what they called it, actually, would have been used for. So that's what this would have probably come out of. So it'll enjoy retirement here with us, like many tractors do. We'll keep wandering around. Tons of orange, tons of tractors are still rolling in here on Friday. Field work's going to be coming up soon. Who knows? Maybe I'll try and ride that thing later. We'll uh, we'll keep her moving and keep checking out more of the Antique Engine and Tractor Association's annual working farm. And it obviously would not be an Alice Charmer show without some silver cedars, some gleaners. The Alice Charmer's uh, combine line, extremely popular for their silver paint. Actually, we got a brand new one still with, uh, you know, there's still some roots back to these older units. This is a Gleaner A model with about maybe an eight foot head on that. Eight foot, eight foot platform, pretty small little platform on it. Pretty small little unit. 
and for your smaller farm we also got a couple more that are gonna be out running we'll do a quick walk around this one hopefully we'll see it out doing some beans a little bit later once the dew gets burnt off the nice part about these is uh there was no question on how these things mechanically work because everything was just out here in the open for for everyone to see and everyone to lose a hand a lot of high fours and threes back in the day let's go look take a look close look up at that motor see up there it runs belts off the front off the back back nice little unit here we'll go check out another uh, we got an open station gleaner just down the way all right here comes a gleaner model e little two row unit on this one just about it's a three it's three rows wide but it only harvests two barely fits down there oh excuse me no it's an f an f model no e he's right couldn't read there nice smaller unit we'll see that thing we'll head out to the field and watch that thing do some harvest and do some picking he said we got quite a few other vehicles other tractors thorn has brought down a pile of olivers to do some harvesting as well and uh, thrush is already working. We got a couple, not sheller, excuse me, is already working over there. Steam tractor is getting fired up. It's going to be a good day. If you're watching this tonight on Friday, the 14th, yeah, or the, no, the 13th, sorry, come down tomorrow. Great show. We're open Saturday and Sunday. Make sure to head down and check it out.
showed this thing earlier running and what's kind of neat about it it's definitely a unique style picker most of the time you'd have your auger would go right out the back and then you'd drag your wagon behind you but this had this contraption that you would end up uh it would go next to you now the advantage was when you went to unload your wagon you could just back your tractor right up next to it and you wouldn't have to unhook from the back it was probably convenient that way the disadvantage was it took up 12 acres to turn this thing around and to try and to open up a field with this would take you half the day but again it was a unique setup obviously you didn't see a lot of it so the success rate could probably be stated in that statement but pretty cool to see this out here like i said would have been back in the day would have been a lot faster just to you know back your tractor up and go but a lot of farmers only had the one tractor so that didn't probably save much time but pretty cool piece here minneapolis moline picker unit and uh, We're here with Matt and this absolutely gorgeous, almost tank-sized uh, 7080. Matt, talk a little bit about the tractor, the project, and uh, what else you got down here with us this weekend? Uh, this one's a 78, 7080, one we've been working on several years. I believe back in 16 we got started with it, uh, with all the mechanical parts of it. And, uh, it took us some years here and there as you, as you get time, and then here this year we put a real heavy effort into getting it done. Uh, Ron DePaul, a friend of mine, passed away here uh, maybe a month ago, and Jeff and Sandy and several people, that uh, Travis Post and others, we worked on it trying to get it done. And uh, so it's been a colossal effort in the last several weeks, the last, I should say, a couple months trying to get this thing done. And we just got it here last night. Nice, nice. It's absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. It's got all of the, uh, it's got all the fancy chrome on all the stainless steel bolts. Apps, I mean, just flawless. Probably better than any uh, 7080 came out of the factory looking. I would say by far. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't even close to this. No, no. no we were talking about. <laughs> we we're just. I'm gonna walk around this side on you, Matt. Um, we we're just. I was just as I was coming in. You're putting your last decals on. And I was watching you put your decals on your batteries there. And we were joking around about how. I don't think in the factory anyone cared about how well those decals look. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but you and I want them just right. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Somebody, not only us, somebody else will come up with a tape measure and be yeah. like, they're, they're a quarter of an inch to the left. <laughs> but um, yeah. what other tractors do you got down here this, this weekend? Uh, we brought in some uh, uh, more of the muscle tractor, uh, 7,000 series open stations, some canopies, high crops, some narrow fronts. Things, things of that nature. So those uh, was like a seventy forty. The both those high crops are those both yours that are out there. Yes. Okay. Yep. Well, uh, one's one's a seventy twenty high yep. crop. Come from uh, southern Louisiana. The other one come from Plaque Mine, Louisiana, right off the farm down there. Nice. And they wanted to see it the way they come, pretty rough, mm -hmm. sitting in the salt air and uh, and outside in humidity, so they get to be pretty rough shape. So that was part of the idea nice. of bringing that one down. Perfect. I think we saw that one a little bit earlier. Well, Matt, I know you got some errands to run. We'll see this one run probably in the parade today. We'll yes, watch sir. it on the live stream and as well as get some other footage. Thanks again for coming, and we uh, we'll hope to see you at the next one. Thank you, sir. Here's that 7020 that Matt was just talking about. Came out of Louisiana. We'll show you that 7040 in a second. High crop. So we always talk about how the different manufacturers did the high crop. And this was just like the standard, but big portal axle. Get in there, take a look at that. Well, that's how you would have gotten all the extra height out of it. Very popular down south for how they farm down there, down Louisiana. We'll go check out that 7040 quick. Here's Matt's other high crop. This one is exactly how it came out of the farm down Louisiana. You can see just the ears of that salt there, what it'll do to a cab. And so. Still in the still in its work clothes. We'll go to the back and check this out. Like I said, probably I'm guessing this one's gonna go through and get just as purdied up as the other ones. Unique how they did their hitch here. Kind of sticks of strength coming up to that where the third member would have been for the three point. Strengthen that up a little bit, a little bit of a farmer fix. You can tell by your by your old link, you probably link well, they're the old tombstone fix there, but cool piece here to have. Just something that uh, kind of how it was. It's an absolutely just piles of orange. 
as well as a couple of big four wheel drives, a four, four W three Oh five. That'd have been the era after that, uh, 8550 that we saw earlier. And you can see because for a while, Alice had the hood that slanted like that. And then they got aerodynamic and slanted them back. We'll go check that out. Here's the front display here. Two 4W305s. Again, 300 horsepower. That's 731 cubic inches of Alice power. And Matt also owns this one as well. Absolutely gorgeous restoration on this, just like all of his other tractors he's got. You can see the orange hoods all the way down the line there. Now in the front row, absolutely gorgeous. We'll keep uh, checking out some more Alice. All right, we're here with Steve and his uh, Russell 1224. Now, now Steve, this is, a, this is a, a rarity of a rarity tractor, if I'm not mistaken. One and only. One and only Russell tractor. 1919. 1919, so 105 years old. Uh, I think it's, I mean, I'm, I'm going to guess not in its work clothes. It's been. <laughs> no, no. It's fully restored. Now, um, tell us a little, you got a little, a little story of why there's only one of one Russell around uh, they didn't make a whole lot of them back in the day and uh, the ones that uh, were left around went uh, to the scrapyard during the war and mm -hmm. my grandpa had a vision that he run across this and decided that uh, this would be a good one to try and restore nice and so where where is it out of where were they manufactured at Massillon, in ohio okay and do they know about how many were made total do you know or is it just a couple no hundred? i don't no one no one, i no. can't i can't say for sure i mean for 1919 they had a lot of the what a tractor was going to look like traits figured out 
Yes, sir. And then they had, you know, you're still borrowing a lot of stuff from your steam tractors with, you know, change your steering. chain steering and a center center pivot. So the steering just goes like this. It doesn't, you know, turn right. individually. So it's it takes about, a, about about three acres to get it turned around. Yes, sir, it does. <laughs> Pretty so, good span. Yeah, we'll get, look back here at the uh, controls layout for it. Now, what kind of a transmission did this have in it? Was it it's just, a walk? Uh, it's a Russell. A oh, Russell. Okay. Yep. Their own design of transmission. The, the motor is a Waukesha. Waukesha motor. Okay. And was it two forward gears, one reverse, or two forward, one reverse? Okay. Nice. Now, will you, will you take this thing in the parade a little bit later today? Yes, sir. Nice. We'll get a video of that. Like I said, we'll have a live stream of that. If you didn't watch it live, go back on the channel and check that out. But, Steve, again, thanks for showing off the Russell. One of one tractor. And next year, like we talked about, the orphans and um, kind of tractors, you know, kind of some of the smaller brands of switch memory features. So the Russell is definitely going to be uh, one of our pinnacle pieces that we have down here in Geneseo. Again, Steve, thanks for bringing this thing out every year. Well, well, look at this little cutie. Just the little baby. 1206. So this one is too small. And oh, that one's just right. Got a full size 1206 next to, I'm guessing, half size, quarter size. But I mean, even down to having the IH weights painted up exactly the same. This is a cool little piece. Looks like it, uh, might be like Kubota engine in there. Let's take a look maybe on the other side. We might be able to get some more subtle clues to what's power in this thing. Does appear to be two cylinder variety. So maybe it's a third scale, you know, three, two cylinders versus six. But I mean, even down to small weights there versus the full size weights, absolutely cool piece. Park next to each other here at the Antique Engine Tractors Association. While we're checking out some of the on non Alice tractors, look at this Ford 9000. Parked a, well, it's sort of version of a half scale, that little utility 3600. The 9000 series, the 9600, some of the coolest looking Ford tractors to come out in their muscle tractor era. Fun story about those, it's very sure everyone's probably heard it a bunch. When Ford licensed to have their tractors made, one of their stipulations was they wanted their tractors to be made in 1 12th scale, not 1 16th like everybody else, which meant they looked bigger. So as a kid, the kid would look at the tractor and go, well, that's bigger, Dad. I want that one. You should have a tractor like that. It was because of that. They were 1 12th scale, not 1 16th. A little fun facts you find out along the way. A little Ford 8N, a little 686. Let's do some work with that. That's a lot of weight for a 686 up front. A pair of 300s owned by Phil Jordan, Super MTA, and his international pickup. Those are all featured last year down here. We'll keep checking out. We'll go uh, some of our static displays we have around here.
that was day one of the Antique Engine and Traction Association. But before we go, and we have a ton of stuff to see tomorrow. We haven't looked at probably half of the stuff today. We just got a little bit of field work we got done. Did a little bit of beans. Um, they turned out really good from the guys I was talking to come out of the field. But tomorrow we'll do even more of it. But we got this D21 here. And I'm not an Alice expert. If you guys have figured that out already. Might be one of the lesser known tractors I'm a, I know a lot about. I know just a little. But this obviously doesn't look like a regular D21. They should probably look more like that one over there. It's maybe not in the white color. This is actually one of the prototype D21s. So this had a lot of D19-ish parts in it, obviously with your grill. It's just a wider grill. You know, it's got the you know, it's got the same motor as what D21 would have had series one. But um, you know, something they probably slapped together engineering-wise to test it out, see what the platform would do before they went with the whole new facelift. And obviously realizing that when you make this grill this wide, it looks well, it's a look that only a mother could love, is what I would probably say about that, versus the D21, which chef's kiss so that is uh just a cool tractor and stuff that you get to see here at the antique engine and tractor association show there's super rare stuff we got some more stuff to check out tomorrow as well so make sure hit the like hit the subscribe drop a comment tell us what what was your favorite part of the show what did i miss that you're mad at that i missed about what fact was i wrong on probably lots of them that's true but uh we'll see you on the next one which will be tomorrow uh make sure to like and subscribe too because we'll be going live for the parade at one o'clock um, watch that. You can see all these tractors drive along the road. It's kind of fun. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye.